What's going on YouTube? It's a boy Mikey on Mikey Reacts. And today I'm back with another reaction video. Today I'll be reacting to the rules of American football. Explained. The rules of American football explained. Uh, I think I've, I've seen American football and and uh, but it's only on in movies when when we when it's a movie that has to do with American football I mean, I've never watched like American football like what it like because I'm not in America I'm in Africa so it's a long way out there I don't know anything I don't know anything about American football so I've seen some Americans react to how uh, soccer the rules of soccer so today I decided to do something something that I know nothing of and that is American football so this is me trying to learn American football and how it works. I watch basketball and uh, yeah, that's basically the only American game that I watch, basketball. But today, I'm going to a new horizon. So let's just react to this. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. We need to grow this channel, guys. So without wasting much of our time, let's go on with this direction. The rules of American football experience. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. Three, two, one. Let's go. Nin explains the rules of American football. The object of the game is for your team to score more points than the opposing team. Teams are made up of 46 players in the NFL with 11 players taking to the field at any one time. The field is 100 yards long by 53 yards wide, with two 10-yard end zones at each end. White markings on the field help players, referees and spectators keep a track of what's going on. The game starts with a kickoff. The team with possession of the ball is known as the offense, and the team without the ball is the defense. The job of the offense is to move the ball up the field and try and score points. This can be done by either running forwards with the ball, or by throwing it up the field for a teammate to catch. The offense is given four chances, or four downs, to make at least 10 yards. If the offense manages to move the ball 10 yards or more, they will retain possession of the ball, whilst given another four downs to make another 10 yards. On your TV screen you will see this graphic. This tells you what down the team is on, and this tells you how many yards they need to make. If you're also watching this on TV, they will also show you the lines they need to cross in order to make their downs. The defense's job is to stop the offense moving the ball forwards by tackling. This includes pulling them to the ground, stopping them from moving forward, or forcing them off the field. If the offense fails to move the ball 10 yards within 4 downs, the ball is given to the defending team at that point. The defending team will then bring on their offensive players and try and move the ball in the opposite direction so that they can score. You will most likely see the offense kick the ball away on 4th down to make it more difficult for the other team to score. Teams will usually have three different units of 11 players that come on the field at different times. They include The offense These players will usually come on the field when they have possession of the ball. The offensive unit consists of these positions. The quarterback is the most important player on the field as he's the one who decides to pass the ball up the field, hand it off to a teammate so that they can run with it, or decide to run with it himself. These offensive line positions are usually responsible for protecting the quarterback. The wide receivers are responsible for running down the field to catch the ball thrown by the quarterback. The tight end is responsible for blocking and also catching the ball in the middle of the field. And the running back and fullback is responsible for running with the ball up the field. The defense. <laughs> These players will usually come on the field. <laughs> I, I must admit, this is, this is really, really confusing. Seriously, like very, very confusing. Okay. The, the team, every team has 11 players, just like the normal soccer game, 11 players on both sides, that's 22 players on the pitch at any time. What I didn't understand is where he said that when it's time for offense, some players come in. So that was totally misunderstood. I don't know what he means by that. I don't know what he meant by that. So I know about, I've heard, I've heard the quarterback, I know. They are like the most important player on the pitch. And uh, yeah, that's just 
the only position that I know in uh, about this game, the quarterback, because they are usually the most important person that, when you watch some of the movies, right? That you watch, you see that the quarterbacks are always uh, important. So so far, eh, I don't know. Let's continue. When the other team has the ball, the defensive unit consists of these positions. The defensive line is responsible for moving past the offensive line. Defensive line, that's the end, the tackle, defensive tackle, the tackle, the end. Hmm? Line checker, line checker, oh. line backer, line backer, line backer, cornerback, safety, safety, cornerback. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the linebackers stop running backs coming through the defensive line and they're also responsible for attacking the quarterback. The cornerbacks try and stop the wide receivers and the safeties try and stop the pass up the middle of the field. Oh, okay. Special teams. Okay. Special teams are specialist players that come on the field when there's a kick involved. Within the special teams is a mixture of offensive and defensive players mixed with either a punter or kicker for offense or a punt returner for defense. Hold on. So when there's uh, when it's time to kick the ball and uh, a player comes in or what, and then after kicking the ball, what happens? Does he does he go out again or what? I don't understand. Is that, is that just his duty, just to come in and kick the ball? Okay, let's continue. Now you know what all the players do and how the game is played. But how do you score? In American football, there's four different ways of scoring. Number one, a touchdown. The main way of scoring is via a touchdown. If the ball is carried into the end zone area or thrown and caught in the end zone, this is a touchdown and is worth six points. Mm. Unlike in rugby, you don't need to touch the ball down onto the ground. All you have to do is cross the line with the nose of the ball to score. Number two, extra points. Once a touchdown has been scored, you have the option of kicking it through the uprights for an extra point, or try and pass or run the ball into the end zone for an extra two points. Mm. Most teams play it safe and go with the one point. Number three, field goal. At any time, the team with the ball can kick the ball between the posts and over the crossbar. To do this, they must hand it to a teammate who will hold it down to the ground, ready for the kicker to make a kick. A successful kick scores three points. Mm. Number four, a safety. If the defense tackles an offensive player behind his own goal line, the defending team scores two points. Oh. The game is played in four 15 minute quarters for a combined playing time of 60 minutes. High score at the end of 60 minutes wins. Ties are rare in American football and overtime periods are played if necessary to determine the winner. Different leagues have different rules about tie games. Is that it? Is that all I need to know? Well, you're almost there, but American football is filled with lots of rules and you'll need to understand a few more of them before playing or watching a game. For example, fumble. If a ball carrier drops the ball, that's a fumble. Any player on the field can recover the ball by diving onto it. The team that recovers a fumble gets possession of the ball. Interception. An aggressive defense can regain possession of the ball by catching or intercepting passes that are meant for players on the other team. Both fumble recoveries and interceptions can be run back into the end zone for touchdowns. Sack. If the defense tackles a quarterback whilst he has possession of the ball, this is known as a sack. Mm -hmm. This is detrimental to the offense as a down is wasted and this usually results in a loss of yards. Incomplete pass. If a pass intended to a receiver hits the ground first or is thrown out of bounds, this is ruled an incomplete pass. A down is wasted and play restarts from the spot of the last down. Penalty. Uh... If a player breaks... No, that, that doesn't make sense. Like. If you, like in soccer, if you have an incomplete pass or if you misplace your pass and it goes out of the pitch, then the opposite, the, the other team gets possession of the ball. They get to have a throw in or a goal kick. You understand? So you don't give the ball back to the person, the, to the team that misplaced the pass or made an incomplete pass. So you give the ball to the other team it should be their ball let's continue one of the rules referees will throw flags onto the field 
it will determine who made the foul and how many yards his team should be penalised. Challenge If a coach disagrees with the decision on the field, they can throw red flags onto the field. The previous play will then be reviewed and if the challenge is successful, the ruling on the field is reversed. If the challenge is unsuccessful and the ruling on the field stands, they forfeit one timeout. Mm. Timeout If a team wants to stop the clock to regroup, take a break or discuss strategy, they are allowed three timeouts per half, each timeout lasts 60 seconds and players get a break of 12 minutes at half time. Now this is a lot to take in, but once you start playing or watching American football, the rules will become clear. If you found this video... Yeah, this is one thing that I don't like about uh, American uh, the basketball. There's a lot of timeouts, you know. In the middle of the play, then they'll say timeout and the players will go outside the court and they start to, talking to the coach and the clock stops. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why, why do they do that? This is a game, you should be played without stopping the game until the game is done, until it's finished. You understand? If you don't know what to coach your team, you do that at halftime. If you, if you, if you, if after all the training and stuff, and then you still need time out to tell your team what to do, then you shouldn't be a coach. There shouldn't be any time out. There is halftime, you tell them what to do, and then whatever they say on the pitch is theirs. You are there by the sideline. Talk to them from there. You don't just stop the game for the coach to talk to the, uh, his players. Then the game stops. And then they go to commercials. That, that's why I don't, I don't really... That's what makes me angry about um, uh, American basketball. But what I usually do, I record them on my uh, Explorer and then I watch it later. Because these timeouts and then commercials, they're really pissing me off. In soccer, when you start the game, the clock doesn't stop. For 45 minutes. There's no, you, they don't stop for you. They don't stop for the coach, they don't stop for whatever. Unless there's an injured player on the pitch, then the game stops for him, for the player to receive treatment. But the clock does not stop. The clock does not stop. So here, there's three, three timeouts in each half, which means, is it each 15 minutes or or 30 minutes, there's three timeouts, or three timeouts in 15 minutes, and then another three timeouts in 15 that's six timeouts in, 16, in 15 minutes, 12 in 30 minutes, that's a lot of timeouts, that's a lot, that's a lot, let's continue. If it's all helpful, please like, share with your friends, rate, comment and subscribe. It takes me ages to make one of these things, and good karma is very much appreciated. Be sure to follow me on Twitter also, but in the meantime, enjoy American football. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Now, I sort of, I sort of got it in a. I sort of, it sort of made a little sense to me. You know, so this is just like rugby. It's just like rugby. I don't know why it's called football. If the ball is not played with your with the foot. You don't use your legs here. You only use your legs to kick the ball once in a while. You don't like the ball is carried. In, uh, you carry the ball in your hands. So I don't know why it's called football. It should be called maybe touch ball. Or no, there's already a handball. But any other name except football, because football is football worldwide. Soccer is football, because you only use your, your, your two feet to play. So this shouldn't be football. You should have another name. You should have another name. Rugby is rugby. Cricket and uh, baseball, they are basically the same thing. That This is almost like rugby. You understand? So, well, I've got uh, a little bit clear picture about how this game works and uh, it's good to know that uh, yeah I'm trying something new so <laughs> I love the game I enjoy it especially when they do their touchdown and their celebrations and stuff I enjoy them I enjoy watching it. and uh, 
but I prefer basketball. I, I, I don't like rugby. I don't like uh, cricket. It's very boring. I'm sorry to say this, but I don't like it. I don't like cricket. I don't like uh, baseball. And I mean, there's nothing interesting about baseball or cricket. So, well, to me, that's what I'm saying. To me, there's nothing interesting about those things. So, well, this, uh, sort of, I sort of got it now. I get it now. So, I next time I'm watching uh, American football, I will understand what they're doing. Well, that's my reaction for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Help me to build this channel. Thank you, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.